Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're going to be talking about Affinity Designer, the features that exist here. Actually, my most favorite features here, the things that I get to work with that blows Illustrator out of the water. Now, a fair warning though, is that these certain things may vary depending on what you do with vector apps. But for me, the fact that they exist in Affinity and they do not exist in Illustrator is a huge deal, right? So we're going to go around these things, talk about them, You show you guys, I'll go ahead and show you guys the things that exist, the things that you should know about just before you get into Affinity Designer. And with this said, let's get started. So with Affinity open here, we're just going to go ahead and, you know, open up a new document. And so the guys at Sharif have released a new version. I've talked about this thing a whole lot in the channel. You should go over and check them out. You see the new features, we covered that, and also the news update, you also see that. So I have the new version, which is the 1.7. Crazy deals happening here, crazy features coming through. And so, like Illustrator, you can create your, you know, your ad boards, your everything, you can create UIs here. But there's just a lot of things that you can make directly here that you cannot do in Illustrator. You may have a way around these things, don't get me wrong. You may have your own way around them, but there's just a lot of things that you really wish Illustrator has. So first things first, I'm going to start off by talking about the UI. The UI is incredibly, insanely simple, nice, straightforward. You cannot find a UI like this in Illustrator. Illustrator has just so many menus that it bores the hell out of you, especially if you're getting used to it. Affinity, on the other hand, makes use of personas, which makes it a little bit easier for you to work with this thing. So you have the default vector persona, you have the pixel persona when it has to do with, you know, texturing, painting things. So you don't need to travel or do a round trip of going to Photoshop and coming back. You can do all of those things directly here. Next thing you have the share. So you can export your stuff from here. You can actually do a live update. Guys, this is crazy. So you can do a live update. So you've saved something on the hard drive. So you make a change here, you save, it automatically exports those things from here directly to that part. Crazy things. So with this out of the way, if you go over to your view, all right? So if we go over to view within the studio, you'll be able to find all of the windows that exist. This is another impressive way, you know, you can play with this. You can do all of these things here. And let's just go ahead and talk about here. So when you go over to the edit and you open up the edit, can you guys see how simplified this looks? Really, really simple, straightforward. So if you want to do anything that has to do with colors, you can just jump right there and do this. I think I covered this previously. All right, so let's move on. Next thing which we need to talk about is the vectors. The vectors here are actually modular and some are sub-procedural. So when I say sub-procedural, I actually mean that some of them, you can create so many crazy things with them. So I'm just going to come over here and pick something that looks like uh, a gear. So I'm just going to hold down shift, click and drag, and you have this here. In Illustrator, you can find something like this, but you may not be able to have as much flexibility as I'm going to show you. So we have this tool here and you want to create something this simple. You can see how simple it is for you to start coming up with crazy shapes that you can work with. So you can do something like that. You can type that in as well and you can also create something like this. Really easy, straightforward, very clean and you can just simply work with this as much as you want. Right now, you've just gone ahead from nothing to creating something that looks like a flower and it's really, really easy for you to go ahead and start texturing this. If you want to change whatever you, you have, you can also do that from here. So at any point in time, you can make crazy and incredible decisions of what you're, of what you're making in real time. And I want you guys to see how flexible or how the feedback of this thing is crazy so we just went from a cog to creating this and let's say you have an ad director he comes in and he's like all right we know this is 12 piece we want to make it like 16 piece all right so you can go ahead and increase this you want to drop it down you can drop it down whatever thing you want to do this is real time and it's not just for this tool alone so you have other tools that exist here as well that you can use to create these crazy things let me bring out the star for example hold down shift click and drag and let's see what we can do with this so with a star object like this you know you can actually create this let's see and within this outer circle we can actually start making an outer circle look really really cool so you can do something like this and at any point in time, let's just go ahead and lock this, all right? So at any point in time, you can also increase the number of stuffs that you have. You guys can see how much designs that you can just whip up. So in just two clicks, three clicks, you know, you can get crazy things happening directly here. Now, this is not just the only thing that happens in real time. Basically, everything that has to do with shading, with creation, happens in real time. Real time in the sense that if you're working with Photoshop or if you're working with Illustrator, 
you might have also fallen into this particular problem. The problem that whenever you click on here to get a fill, you have to click then hit on the word apply or you have to click and wait for it to load. But in Affinity, it's not the same. It's not the same, baby. You have to actually just move around and as you slide through the hues, you'll be able to see it update on your canvas. Isn't this crazy? Isn't this interesting? All right, so if it's not for you, it is for me because with this, it's gonna save you a whole lot of second guessing and knowing exactly what you want and you'll be able to go through and do or create that. Since speaking about fill, there is also an opacity slider here that you can use to, you know, create or you can use to slide through to make your object, you know, way more visible and less visible. Now, by the other side of the slider, you can add noise to your object. Probably you're wondering what is noise, especially if you're coming from Illustrator. Noise is actually something you can add without even thinking about it. So if you click over here, you get this to taunt opacity. You click here, it's noise, and you can just throw in noise. Can you guys see how cool we've just moved from just creating this to adding noise to your object? All right, so you can add noise from here and you know this is just crazy the fact that this happens and you don't have to actually think about it is really really insane so you can just throw in a couple of noise there and you can do a couple of things here and there and they just get to work you don't have to think about them you don't have to bother about them they just happen in the same vein that we're talking about all of these things that you can make here let's talk about the effects effects here are super nice so you might be saying all right so you've seen a couple of effects in uh Illustrator. Let's talk about the effects that exist here. If you click over here, you'll be able to find the blending shape or the blending tool kind of effect that you have in Photoshop. But you can go over here and throw in any kind of effect that you want. Let's say, for example, we want a blur. This does not really make so much sense when you're working in Illustrator. So if you want to create a blur here, you can just simply blur this and you can see that the edges are not blur. So the blur doesn't actually constrain you to the edges you can blur this as much as you want. Are you guys actually taking note of this? Illustrator some way, somehow, basically preserves the alpha when you're trying to create this blur, all right? So if you want to preserve the alpha, you have that opinion here, or you have that option to do that here. But uh, you know, if you just want to get a simple blur, you can do this here. You can also do the same thing when it gets to do with bevel. So for the bevel, you can actually throw in as much bevel as you want. So we want a ticker radius, you can get this feedback real time directly directly here. So crazy things are happening directly inside here. This is just the very beginning. Now let's talk about history. You remember whenever you create something in Illustrator, you save and you close, your history is gone that's goodbye. But in Affinity, your history never deletes. So you remember how we started out by creating all these things? If you go ahead and click on file and you save history with document, whenever you open this, like a freaking Houdini app, this saves your history. So you don't actually have to, you know, say, all right, oh, I did that before, before I saved, your history gets saved. So you remember how we started out? So I'm just going to rewind this all the way back and you can see that every single thing that we've done you can see how the creation process actually is so history still stays it preserves the history all of the effects we played with you can find all of them directly here and just to continue with saying that the history makes sense if you're about to export an object all right so if you're about to export an object and you're not so sure about, okay, I don't know how this is going to look like when it's a raster graphics, you don't need to worry about those, especially if you're working in Affinity. So what do I mean by this? Let me just simply go ahead and let's say we just take this and drop this directly somewhere else. So let me just drop this here. Okay, so what do I mean by this? If you go over to this part called view and you move over to the second section that actually says view mode, you'll be able to split your view. All right, so now we've split at this view, you actually don't know what's going on. What's going on right here is if I zoom right close, you will be able to see what it looks like as a vector image directly here and versus what it looks like as a raster image directly here. So you're going to be able to see what the pixels would look like when you export this tool. We simply makes so much sense. So much sense, in fact, that you can now decide 
to you know either increase the size of the vector that you're working with or you can go ahead and reduce the size of the vector you can make your color changes in real time even before you go out to start exporting this particular tool this is insanely nice and it doesn't just stop here maybe you have this particular director or you're doing a particular project that at certain times you require to show wireframes so uh, you might be thinking, all right, I need to finish this, then go ahead and just simply put a very no color on all the images so that at the end of the day, or you just throw in white and throw in a couple of outlines. If you're working with Affinity, that is not a problem because within the view mode, you can choose to just show outlines, all right? Isn't this super clean? So before you go ahead to start exporting this, there's just a lot of things that you can actually take into account review before you get these things out and still speaking about review we just talked about how you can take a look at this right so what if you're working in a multi desktop all right and within this multi desktop you want to show a friend something at the same time you want to work on something else you remember whenever you're working with things like illustrator you're just working in one screen and that's all about it in affinity by the way you can actually have multi views so i can come over here and say i need a new view and actually have a new view directly here now with this new view i can actually take this all right plug it into a different monitor or plug it directly to maybe an ipad and preview what i'm doing there or check the color correction so maybe you have one ips and you have another uh, monitor that's just a regular rgb monitor it's going to be very very easy for you to actually see what the color looks like on both of them before you get to start exporting. So everything that you do here, you can also see it reflect here. And at the same time, anything that you do on the other side happens here. Think about it like you're having multiple windows of the same thing spread around the monitors that you have. I wish there is something like this in the entire Adobe community apps that they have, but this doesn't exist and not even for apps like Photoshop. And so just when you think that everything that you've actually wanted to see you've seen them all there comes in the brushes the brushes in affinity are super incredible and super nice so let's say you want to actually drive this or say you want to drive your stroke with a brush all you have to do is ask just go ahead and just drop it there and you can see that it, let's just zoom right in you can see that we are driving the stroke by using brushes and by the way you can also create your own custom brushes if you want me to make videos about how you can create your custom brushes tell me about these things in the comment section and i will go ahead and do this and once i get to put something like this i want you guys to take a very simple look i can control the width of the brush as much as i want and what if you want to draw this using a pen and that brings us to something that is brand new that exists in affinity now just in case you have no idea so in the new affinity all right you can see this is really cool so in the new affinity there is something called a pen sculpt all right i think it's a pencil sculpt but i call them pen sculpt all right so there is a new pen or pencil sculpt so let's say we get this pencil here and we go ahead to start drawing you can see how cool this is all right if you turn on the pencil sculpt or the pen sculpt you can also continue drawing and you can see automatically you're sculpting and you're making changes to what you have okay so you can see this here illustrator don't have this they never thought about this but it exists here and that is what it is here guys so you can go ahead and use this for whatever thing that you want this doesn't still stop the fact that you cannot pick this up and convert them to brushes you can still make your own strokes directly here and also at the same time convert these things to brushes next up i'm going to talk to you guys about how you can make your own color palette so you already know how color palettes exist in various apps all right so let's say in illustrator in other apps you have your own color palettes you have certain things that you want to work with you know you have all of those things right so directly directly here there are ways you can make your color palette or should i call them color swatches okay so if you want to make your own color swatches all you have to do is load the image that you want to make use of so i'm just going to go ahead and look for one of these images and i'm going to throw it directly here and it opens so with this image opened here how can you extract all of these colors that you want to paint with so you want to paint an object or you want to use a painting or you want to extract colors from an object and you want to use those colors to actually drive your own what you can do is you can come over to this button here simply click here and create palette from document all right as document palette so once you do that 
all of the colors, all of the color variations that exist on this document, you can actually generate all of them from here. I'm just going to bring in another one so I can use this to show you guys. If I come through again and go over to this uh, section, or you can just simply create from image, which gets to ask you to put in the image that you want. But if you go from here and simply say, I want to actually get this as a document palette, you can see all of the colors, all right? And you can actually see the name directly here. All of the colors that exist within this image, you can get them here, all right? So you can now use this and create incredibly nice stuff that you can work with the snapping is super clean it works like a charm the navigations here are very basic works exactly like you would want them to work especially if you're used to things like uh illustrator the navigation here are very very easy and straightforward to get into and not long ago we got an update all right so there was an update or there is an update with 1.7 the update that actually says you can now go ahead and make symmetrical things so if i go through and click on the brush and try to draw all right so let's say i'm going to uh let's just get this done i'm going to go over and click directly here select and let's go ahead and deselect that all right so i'm going to select this now and you can see with this brush i am actually drawing all right now if you want to actually go ahead or if you want to go ahead and make symmetry you can just turn on symmetry here and i already showed this in the previous video so you guys can you know get or catch some fun with this so with this you can make crazy crazy things and to me i think these are one of those or these are the features that actually throws illustrator out of the waters especially with uh the new version that has been released there's a couple of other things that has been made all right there's a couple of other things that have been made but for me i think this makes a lot of sense and i would really really like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section do you like this particular things or do you like this uh the review what are the things that you make use of in illustrator or what are the things that you've seen in affinity that blows your mind and you wish existed in illustrator i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below and if you like this video you know what to do go ahead hit the like button and also turn on notification and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification because we release new content every day and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace